welcome Pastor Edward Munene for today's sermon. Be blessed. I am so excited to be sharing the Word of God with us today, especially after not being uh, preaching <laughs> since the month of, uh, well, since the month of March, where I pre preached one sermon in the month of April. But here we are. After a break uh, today, we begin a sermon series uh, here at ICC Mombasa. We are calling it This Is It. Uh, well, this is us, not this is it. This is us. And I am so excited to be uh, sharing this with us. It's an introduction of a new sermon. And uh, there's so much that uh, I want to say about this sermon. But before I do that, I'd like you to do something here. You know, if it was uh, you and I were, you know, physically in the same place, I would have given you a different activity. But today I want to give you acti an activity where I want you to think of somebody who is a friend of yours, a workmate, a colleague, uh, you know, somebody you interact with, somebody you know, maybe your neighbor who has a name that begins with the same letter as yours and I want you to invite them and tell them you need to watch this someone with me online you know and that simply means uh, if your name is Edward like my name uh, you go ahead and uh, invite somebody called Edwin or Emmanuel or Emma and just tell them would you watch this someone together with me uh, because I want you to go ahead and invite somebody else so that uh, we are not listening or we are not going through this someone by ourselves and as you're doing that I'd like to pray and then bring the Word of God to us Heavenly Father it's my prayer that as we share your word, you will minister to us. Every person watching this on uh, Facebook, every person watching this on YouTube, every person watching this on uh, the, our ICC Mombasa page, uh, website, Lord, it's my prayer that uh, you will minister to them. They will experience, they will hear your word, you will speak to them, Lord, you will draw them to yourself, and you will do a work that uh, is very transformative in their lives. I trust you, Father, to give me utterance and guidance as I share your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so I trust that you are doing that right now. And uh, let me just say a big welcome to somebody who might have been invited and they're here. It's good to have you here. My name is Edward Monene and I'm bringing you the Word of God uh, from International Christian Center Mombasa, a church that I'm privileged uh, to be one of the pastors, one of the staff team. And I am so excited to bring us the Word of God. And uh, because we have already prayed, I'd like us to go ahead and... Uh, and, and just dig into the word of God. And as we do so today, one of the reasons why I told you to go ahead and invite somebody else, you know, especially somebody who has a name, you know, that begins with the same letter as you. I just wanted you to stop thinking about yourself and to think about somebody else. You know, is there somebody else who can be blessed? Is there somebody else you can invite? Is there somebody else you can touch or you can minister to? And maybe they're telling you, I am not able to log in because I don't have data. You share with them. You bless them. You become a, a, an inspiration to them. You share with them something and uh, I believe that as you do so they will be blessed greatly and uh, as I said earlier today we begin a sermon series uh, that I believe is going to impact us greatly as uh, we dig in and uh, as we get to share this in fact allow me to say uh, if you are not able to be here online on YouTube or Facebook or the ICC Mombasa website to watch this every Sunday I'd like to ask you to, to just seek to ensure that you show up at KPM Baraki for our in-person services. And if you're not able to be there for our in-person services, what if you went ahead and ensured that you are there? On the zoom service because we do a zoom service at 6 a.m uh, to 8 a.m and so i am giving you all the options that are available because i want you to choose and say for the next number of weeks as this summon series is going on i want to be there i just want to ensure that i am part of this why because this summon series we call it this is us we are going to be sharing on what the church is meant to be because we need to be that church. We need to be that church. And when I say church, I don't mean necessarily ICC Mombasa. I mean the body of Christ. We are supposed to be this kind of church. And what do I mean by that? We are supposed to be a church that is a hospital, a place where people come to find healing. We are supposed to be a home, a place where people belong. And we are supposed to be a boot camp where the army is equipped and released to go uh, do battle. As I say that, you know, in the body of Christ, people talk a lot about uh, the whole father and sons or, uh, you know, the whole 
family dynamics of a church and uh, I know there are churches where you know you can't even call the pastor pastor you know because you call them daddy or you call them father but allow me to say something here uh, as as we focus so much on that the body of Christ has forgotten two other functions that the church is supposed to be we're supposed to be a hospital uh, you know for uh, those who need healing and we are supposed to be a boot camp where the army is trained and equipped and through this sermon series we'll give you scriptures and you'll be able to see that indeed church is supposed to be each one of those uh, three things that I've talked about you see it's easy to write off a sermon series like this it's very easy to sit back and say well I, I wasn't looking for that I wanted to hear a sermon about how God is going to work in my life how God is going to perform miracles how God is going to open doors for me but allow me to say you need to hear this because this sermon series will bless you greatly and I need you uh, to just ensure that you are part of this in fact get out your notebooks and pens and let's go ahead and dig into the Word of God for today Today we are talking about the church being a hospital. And let me just say as we begin, as we dig into the word of God today, um, that uh, if this is going to be not only a, a someone that will, will speak to us about what we are supposed to be as a church, is a someone that I believe is going to minister to us greatly. You need to hear this. Church is meant to be a hospital. You see, I grew up, <laughs> I grew up, uh, you know, in church. My grandparents, were church elders and uh, my, my parents I you know walked in the same line long before they were born again they they insisted that all of us had to go to church as a family and so from a little boy uh, going to church was mandatory in my family and as I grew up I can tell you this that the church that uh, I normally love calling it my grandmother's church in my grandmother's church church was not a hospital it was uh, a place where, and I'll give you two definitions of it as uh, we go on. It was a place where how you dressed for church was very different from how you lived in the course of the week. Because you had to have church clothes. There was a way that you dressed. I used to see my mom. She would make her hair. She would plait her hair. It would be, you know, all the nice hairstyles that uh, people normally have on their hair. But on Sunday morning, she had to have a headscarf. When she went to church and it's not just my mom it's many other women on sunday morning when they were going to church you couldn't see their hair anywhere and so uh, you know you have to, you had to have clothes your hairstyle was very important and when i say hairstyle because i've already told you the women covered their hair uh when i talk about hairstyle it was the men it was the men and you see, when I was growing up, there, there was actually hairstyle for men uh, because I'm talking about the 80s when there used to be the box hairstyle, you know, and, uh, and then we had uh, somebody uh, called Michael Jackson. I don't know whether any one of you remembers or you were alive then uh, with, uh, you know, black moccasins and white socks and black trousers. And, uh, you know, Michael Jackson used to do the moonwalk and, uh, and, and there was break dancing. But you couldn't dress in any way like that going to church. If you wore, you know, uh, trousers that uh, didn't touch your knees, uh, I mean, didn't touch your ankles and white socks and moccasins, uh, and you went to church, the elders would sit you down because the would tell you clearly you're not supposed to be dressing this way as you come to church michael jackson or any look-alike was not allowed in church and uh, so you had to have a certain way of dressing you see my friends what i'm saying is my grandmother's my grandmother's church was more of a country club or a golf club if you may a place where their membership rules this is how you dress this is how you show up. This is what you do and what you cannot be able to do as you came. And you are to ensure that you, you fit in. Because if you come dressed any way differently, you would actually be stopped from being part of the church. But that's not the only thing that was, uh, you know, I, I have an issue with, with my grandmother's church. Uh, my grandmother's church was also not just um, a club. It was also a museum. It's a place where... If you wanted to know how music was in the 19 in the 1800s you went to church because we sang the same hymns we followed the same patterns of worship and nothing changed in fact i remember one day you know we were in church as young people who we were so excited we were singing we were clapping we were dancing 
and we were summoned by the church elders and we were sat down and we were told you don't sing like that in that church because the way things used to be and i'm quoting verbatim it's only that i'm translating the way things used to be is the way things shall be now and is the way things shall always be even in the days to come and you don't change it in other words it was a museum when you went to church you didn't stand and shout amen when the word blessed you you did what they did in the pious 1800s you sat quietly you meditated and you carried a bible i don't know what they're doing in this day and age when people are, are carrying you know their bibles on their phones i have no idea i haven't been there i haven't been there but church was a museum and i'd like to just say to us today as we think about this you know allow me to ask the question is is church really that for you is church really that for you is there a different way of doing church is there a different way of seeing church there are many things that the bible tells us and i'd like to uh, go ahead and dig into some of them today because i want to show you from the word of god that, uh, that there's so much more to church than what people see it or what people say or what people focus on and i want you to join together with me as uh, we we go on this journey because i trust and i pray and i believe that god will speak to you god will minister to you uh, god will work in your life and uh, just bring transformation to you you see, one of the reasons why I am pained by this and why we are talking about what we are talking about is because my uncle, my uncle, uh, he has been away from church since 1973. He's a drunk. Um, you, you see, he went to my grandmother's church in 1973 and he was uh, a little drunk, according to what he tells me. He was smelling of alcohol, but he was sober. And that day, he had felt a conviction that he needed to go to church. And so he showed up at church. But as he entered and he was about to sit down publicly, you know, everyone saw it. Everyone, you know, sort of heard what was going on. He was stopped by an usher. And he was, uh, you know, stopped and an elder was called and, and, and they were told, you know, this person has come to church and they are smelling of alcohol. And uh, the elder came running and they pushed him out and they took him outside the doors of the church and they told him, you cannot come to church drunk or smelling of alcohol. Go away with your alcohol because you will offend God. God will be offended by you. And so he walked away. He was afraid. He was hurt. He was embarrassed and uh, he was told that God doesn't like people like him. And I've tried to witness to my uncle for many years and he always goes back to that story. And he says, God doesn't like people like me. That's what I was told. And I'm so afraid that my uncle is going to die without knowing Jesus Christ, without a relationship and connection with Jesus Christ because he's an old man now. And I am afraid and my heart grieves for my uncle you see i believe with everything in me that church is not meant to be a club neither is it you know supposed to be a place where only members are allowed i believe that church is not supposed to be a museum where we keep doing what was always done and uh, you know that there's no uh, change at all to be able to minister to the new people or, or a new generation you know that we keep doing what has always been done without even questioning i believe that church actually allow me to tell you what i believe I believe that church is meant to be a hospital. And I'd like to just read for us from the book of Luke chapter 5, verse number 31 to verse number 32. And I just want to show you something from the word of God. This is the word of Jesus. Here is what he said. Jesus answered them and said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need repentance. And here we find Jesus responding to the questions and, uh, you know, concerning his interaction and hanging out uh, with the sinners. The, the, the Pharisees had a problem with this. And so they were, had asked Jesus a few questions. And Jesus responds by telling the Pharisees that he had come.
come to seek and to save the sinners because they are the ones in need of healing. They're the ones who are in need of repentance. You see, Jesus compared sickness, uh, I mean, uh, uh, sin to sickness and sickness to sin. And he says that those who need a, vis a physician are those who need repentance, are the sinners, not the people who think that they do not need help. And I say to us today that Jesus, our master physician, is still in the church and is still in the business of healing those who are sick, changing and transforming their lives, teaching them and guiding them and helping them to live a life that honors and glorifies the Father. And I say to us today, if anyone is sick, whether it be physically, whether it be mentally, emotionally or spiritually, you know, people who are wounded, people who are hurt, people who need help and need a savior, he is still a Available, and that should be the message of the church. And because the master physician is the Lord of the church, those who are supposed to come, it doesn't matter how they dress, they don't need their Sunday best. In fact, it's the young people who still remember the days of uh, Michael Jackson who still do moonwalk and, and wear, because I've seen them, I've seen elderly people who still dress that way. They, they need to know Jesus Christ. It's the people in the clubs, it's the people in the party dance, it's the people that are drinking and partying and clubbing, it's the people that are caught up in prostitution and all kinds of ways. It's the people that are walking in corruption and don't realize that they need a savior, everyone of these people is welcome in the church and they don't need to change anything to come Jesus is the one who changes and I'd like to just say you don't need Sunday clothes you don't need to change anything all you need to do is come Jesus is waiting he's the one who does the work of transforming and I'd like to just say because our summon series for this month is entitled this is us that at ICC Mombasa anyone is welcome they don't need to change anything Jesus is the one who is in the business of changing he's the one who's in the business of changing sinners are welcome those who are caught up in sin and addictions and problems are welcome those who think that they don't qualify they're not good enough because of the things that they have done they are welcome single mothers are welcome single fathers are welcome the drunks are welcome drug addicts are welcome everyone is welcome because jesus is the one who heals and i say to us i say see mombasa and everyone listening to me that we need to be a church that resembles Jesus. That when people look at us and they look at the ministry of Jesus in the word of God, they begin to see similarities. That we do things the same way. We live like Jesus lived. We serve like he served. We walk like he walked. Because you see to Jesus, those with tattered clothes were welcome. Those who are in pain were welcome. Those who are in shame and brokenness were welcome. Oh yes, the prostitutes were welcome. The tax collectors like Zacchaeus were welcome. You know, it's people that were hurting and in pain were welcome. Those who are demon possessed were welcome. All of them came and as they came to Jesus, they were never ever the same again. They were transformed because he's still transforming and he's still changing lives. You see, the church should be a place where those who are lost can come. Those who are in need of change can come. Those who are in need of transformation can come. Those who are in need of encountering their savior can come. There needs to be a seat in every church for people like those and no one should ever chase them out you see my concern however as i share this sermon is that the doors of this hospital that is called church are not open the people that are supposed to be working in the hospital serving you know as nurses and paramedics and helping the master surgeon the people that jesus has changed and commanded that they go into the world so that they can be able to change and transform it those people have forgotten their task and they have become those who judge those who push back at others those who refuse people from entering those who stop those that are coming from coming and they begin to tell them how they need to change how they need to dress better how they need to work on their hairstyle and how they need to do all these things allow me to say we need to say no that's not who we are supposed to be because when you look at the ministry of jesus as i said earlier i repeat again you see that everyone was welcome everyone was welcome the lepros were welcome the pharisees with their religiosity were welcome the sick were welcome the prostitutes were welcome the tax collectors were welcome people who thought that they were unworthy like the woman with the issue of blood were welcome everyone was welcome 
And I say here at ICC Mombasa, we need to ensure that we become more and more like Jesus. And our ministry needs to look like the ministry of Jesus. Less and less of everything around us, but more and more like Jesus. Because he called us to be like him, to be imitators of God. Therefore, as dearly beloved children, when I say this is us, what I'm saying to us is that we need to be a hospital for sinners. We want to be a place where healing happens a place where people can come and begin their journey their journey of healing their journey of knowing the lord their journey of being transformed and made whole by jesus and i'd like us to go ahead and read from the book of second kings chapter 5 and i want to just show you from the word of god in second kings chapter 5 if you have time i'd like to encourage you to go ahead and just read that whole chapter uh because there are certain key lessons we'll find in there that are very important and very useful uh for us as a church and i believe that you're ready for me to go ahead and dig into this story because out of this story i want to give you three points and then we'll be done very quickly uh three points out of this story because in this story second kings chapter 5 we find us the story of a man that was sick the Bible says he was valiant, he was mighty, but he was sick. And when you look at those words, valiant, mighty, you know, that the Bible uses, you begin to realize that uh, Naaman, who was being described by this story, uh, you know, he, he was a man of skill. He was a man of potential and ability. He had so much that he could be able to do and contribute. He was a great man. He was a man that, that uh, you know, had done exploits and a man that had skill to do so much more, but he was sick. He was sick. There was a problem somewhere. And I say to us today, there are so many people in our day. There are so many people in our generation. Maybe it could be you that is listening to me. You know, you have so much that you can be able to accomplish. So much skill, ability, talent, gifting. But there's something that is holding you and causing you not to be all that God created you. Not to live the life that God intends of you. Not to be the difference maker that you're supposed to be. Not to live your life for God's glory and God's praise. But something interesting, uh, you know, happens. Naman's, uh, you know, with his sickness and all, and has an encounter with a Jewish girl, with a girl that really they had captured and brought into his house as a servant. And this girl, you know, is going to teach us our first lesson. And if you read the story, you know, first, uh, verse number one all the way to verse number three, you will see this story. Because there's something very interesting uh, that this girl says, and I'd like to read those verses, you know, in uh, chapter number five, second Kings, verse number one to verse number three. The Bible says, now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him, the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Did you hear the bat? But he had leprosy. Mighty man with power, with skill, with ability, with so much potential. But there was a problem. And there's so many people that are living that way this day. You know, they have so much that they can be able to accomplish, but there is a problem. But yet the church is supposed to be a hospital, a place where such people find healing so that they can be all that they ought to be. It's people that are caught up in corruption. It's people that are caught up in crime. It's people that are caught up, you know, with seeking after the pressures of this life. It's people that are caught up with selfishness who will find healing in the church and they will go out there and they'll become such transformative agents that our world can be changed by these people as they go out to do what they're supposed to do. Verse number two, the Bible says, Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. Verse three, she said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. If only my master would go down to, you know, to, to, to Israel, there is a man there that would be able to cure him of his leprosy. And there, right there, we find our lesson number one for today and here it is very quickly very easily it simply says this is my lesson to us in order for the church to become the hospital that we are supposed to be we need to learn this here is the lesson everyone you need to write this down everyone is welcome and they are free to come as they are you see this servant girl does not sit back and say Naaman is not an Israelite she does not look at him and say, this is my oppressor. She does not say, this man worships other gods. The servant girl simply says, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria. 
You see, Naaman was welcome. This girl knew this man is welcome to know my God. This man is welcome to experience my God. This man is welcome to, to go and encounter my God because if, she, if he encounters my God, God, he will be changed completely. And I say today, it doesn't matter who it is out there. If they encounter Jesus, their life will be changed. They will never ever be the same again. And we need to realize that as a church. We need to stop stopping people from coming to church. We need to stop stopping people from knowing our God and experiencing our God. We need to open the doors and say anyone is welcome because our God says whosoever believes he doesn't limit it whosoever. It doesn't matter where they are caught up. It's that government official. It's that boss in your office. It's that colleague of yours who is always high. It's, it's that friend of yours who is always sleeping around. It's that corrupt guy that you've been dealing with. It's everyone. They are welcome because God is the one who changes and transforms. And this servant girl, what a powerful woman of God. She said, if only my master would see the prophet in Samaria, he would cure him. He would heal him. She knew that there is a God in Israel who heals, who transforms, who changes people's lives. And I say to us today, we need to come to that place where we say anyone can come because Jesus is still healing. He's still changing lives. He's still transforming men. He's still changing people for God's glory and God's praise. Something very quickly before I go to point number two. Something very quickly. Uh, you see, this girl was a servant girl. She had been captured. She was a slave. She should have had a grudge against this man she should have been bitter against this man she should have just said you know what i wish he would die but she teaches us such a powerful lesson this girl had no grudge she had no pain she was whole. She was healed. She knew the God that she believed in. And I say to us today, every one of us in the body of Christ needs to let Jesus heal us so that he can take away bitterness. He can stop us from gossiping and seeing people and, and, and just being, you know, walking in, in sin and walking in pain and walking in struggles of all kinds and trying to push people away. Because sometimes I think the body of Christ is filled with people that need healing, but yet they are not seeking God for healing. And because of that, we become such people who wound others we gossip we tell lies we, we scheme against people we do things that destroy other people's lives listen to me we need healing we need God to heal us you know you're holding a grudge against what was done to you you know five years ago or two years ago or three months ago let it go let God heal you let God take away that bitterness let God change you so that you can become a person that God can use to bring healing to others he heals not just those who are outside he heals even those who are in the church. And I pray today that every one of you listening to me today will allow God to heal you. You don't need to walk around bitter, in pain, struggling, you know, carrying all kinds of issues. Let the Lord heal you. May he heal you today. Somebody hurt you, let it go. You have been living in anger, let it go. You, you know, you have been struggling to forgive. I pray today that you will forgive. I pray that you will experience healing. Healing. So that you can be like this little girl, that you can walk healed and able to invite others to experience the healing that you have experienced. Point number two, point number two. If you read verse number 10 out of the same chapter, remember I told you you can read the whole chapter. I'm just giving you the points uh, here. In, in, in verse number 10, that same chapter, 2 Kings chapter of, of 5 verse number 10, the Bible says Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, to say to Naaman, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. You see, Naaman has left uh, his homeland in Aram, has gone all the way to Israel, has ended up appearing before uh, Elisha. But Elisha does not even go outside to see him. What's my point here? You see, the message, church, you need to write this down. This is my point number two. The message must remain simply what he has sent us to proclaim. You see, it's not my message. It's not your message. We need to stop preaching what we think or what we want and begin preaching the word of the Lord. The gospel message is so simple that Jesus came. He died on the cross. He shed his blood for us for the forgiveness of our sins. And anyone who believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life because their sins will be forgiven. That message is so simple. And anyone can receive Jesus. The Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, 
Oh, everyone, the sinners, the people spending nights, you know, in drunkenness, the people carousing and doing all kinds of things. Everyone can accept Jesus. Everyone is welcome. No one is stopped. The message needs to be simply what Jesus sent us to preach. In order for the church to be the church, to be the healing place that is supposed to be, then Jesus must be the one that we preach and proclaim. It is the one that we invite people to know. Is the one that we point people to. I mean, imagine, Elijah did not even go outside to meet these man from Aram, this great man, this mighty man, this valiant soldier, Elisha does not go outside to meet him. He simply sends a messenger and says, go wash. I believe that's what the Holy Spirit had spoken to him. And so it was not about Elisha. It's not, it was not about how cool our church is. It's not about the gadgets that we have. It's not about uh, the things that we have. There's nothing to boast about. We need to proclaim the message of the cross and let the world come to know that Lord that you and I have believed in. It's not about us. It's about him. Let's proclaim that message and invite the world to know him. Because church, this is who we are. This is us. That, that's what we do. We are those who proclaim the message of Jesus. Have you ever met him? Have you ever experienced him? Allow me to say it's so simple. All you need to do is say, Jesus, I give you my life. I trust you to be my Lord and my Savior. And from today going forward, he will do that. My goodness, you can get saved in your house. You don't even need to repeat the sinner's prayer. All you need to do is call on to him and say, Lord, I need you. And he will save you and transform you. People have gone and saved all by themselves early in the morning, some in the club. I know a man that gave his life to Jesus in a club, sitting, drinking. And he said, Lord, would you rescue me from here? Would you change my life? Would you stop me from wasting my life? And from that day, he was completely changed. The next time he went to the club, he wasn't able to drink. He kept asking for soda. And then he would ask for a beer. And then he would say, stop. Because there was something inside of him that said, I don't want that stuff anymore. God changed him. And today, he's a proclaimer of this same gospel. And so I say to you today, we must keep the message simple. Jesus came to save sinners. He came to transform and change people. I mean, just imagine this man went back to his homeland, proclaiming the God of Israel. He even carried soil from Israel to go make an altar for his God. And yet, Elisha did not even go outside to meet him. We must keep the message about Jesus. It must remain about Christ. We must let him change us and change everyone else. Because church is a hospital. It's a place where the master physician, Jesus himself, the one who proclaimed and said, it's the sinners who need healing. He must remain at the place where he is healing his people, changing their lives and transforming them. Point number three, because this is us. This is who we are supposed to be. This is who we are supposed to be. Point number three, it's about God and not about us. And so not only do we keep the message simple, not only do we invite everyone and say they're welcome. Point number three, it's about God and never ever about us. Notice in verse number 13, I'm going to pick that verse, uh, but I told you to go ahead and read the whole chapter. Let me, let me just read for us chapter number three, and then we'll be done here. The Bible, uh, I'm, I'm in chapter number five, verse number 13. The Bible says, Naaman's servants went to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done? it how much more than when he tells you wash and be cleansed verse 14 so he went down and dipped himself in the jordan seven times and the man of uh, as the man of god had told him and his flesh was restored and he became clean like that of a young boy then naman and all his attendants went back to the man of god he stood before him and said now i know that there is no god in all the world except in israel so please accept a gift from your servant the prophet answered and said as surely as the lord lives whom i serve i am not i will not accept a thing and even though Though Naaman urged him, he refused. Now I know there is no God in all the world except in Israel. That's, that was the point of this encounter. And Elisha makes sure that it remains about that. He does not step in. He does not accept an offering. He does not accept any gift because he did nothing. It was about God. It was about God. We have to ensure it's about God. That's our goal. That's what we pursue. That's what we proclaim. That's what we invite people into. It's about God. 
It's about God. Church is a place where people come to encounter the head of the church. It's a place where they come to interact with the body of Christ. It's a place where they meet with Christ. If we make it about anything else, if we make it about our sound system, if we make it about the equipment, if we make it about our teacher, our pastor, our apostle, our prophet, allow me to say this, we are missing it because it's a healing place and the healer is Jesus. It's not us. He is the healer. Oh, he is the healer and he's drawing people to himself and we need to draw people to him. We invite, we need to invite people to him. Uh, allow me to conclude this by saying, just imagine with me. Just, just go ahead and imagine with me. Imagine church, a place where we are healed, a place where we are not hurting and gossiping and hindering and fighting and pushing others away. A place where we are inviting and drawing people in, attracting them to Jesus, pointing them to Jesus in our houses, in our estates, you know, with our lives. Everywhere we go, we are inviting and telling the story of Jesus simply all because we know everyone is welcome and we are keeping the message about Jesus and we are pointing everyone to God because it's about God. Just imagine with me. We invite people into our caring communities, you know, our small groups. Are you part of a small group, by the way? Allow me to ask. Is there a place you can invite people to meet with you, interact with you, and do church with you? Are you part of the church? Because you need to be. You need to be part of a small group. You need to be part of a small group. You cannot afford to continue to be a lone ranger. But because where is your hospital? Where is that place that you find healing? Where is that place that you find community and build relationships with others? But anyway, let's continue here. Just, just imagine with me. Imagine with me. People in Mombasa begin to be touched and changed. Be, just begin to be transformed because of this healing place. Just think with me. People around the nation of Kenya begin to be changed and impacted and even beyond. Why? Because the church is the healing place. We become the healing place that we, we need to be. Not a place of people being destroyed, people being hurt, people being wounded, but people a place where people encounter Jesus and they get to know him and walk in his purposes. Just imagine with me. We become that kind of a place, a place where we connect people to God and to each other, a place where we challenge one another to be like Christ, to be all that Jesus was, a place where, you know, we begin to walk out and to go out and to change the world because of the change that we are experiencing. Just imagine with me, that's what the church is supposed to be. That's what we are supposed to be, a healing place. Are you here and you're hurt and wounded? disappointed maybe you are among the people who say you know i went to church and i was so badly hurt i don't think i'll ever step through the doors of a church again allow me to say the church is not supposed to be a place where you get hurt it's supposed to be a place where you get healed where you get healed and today i'd like to invite you to go ahead and just begin to pray for yourself and say lord would you heal me because i am praying that the master the physician the healer himself would heal you and minister to you wherever you are maybe you are sick you're like naman there is something that is causing you not to be the man that you ought to be there is leprosy in your life there is sin there is addiction there are challenges and problems of all kinds allow me to say it's not hopeless for you you are welcome you can encounter jesus you can encounter Jesus today. Maybe you look at yourself and you think, you know, the pornography and the masturbation and the struggles that you have with alcohol and all kinds of other things that I may name. Maybe you're caught up in, in, in swindling and lying and corruption and you don't know what to do. Allow me to say, Jesus, when he comes in, when you invite him in, like Zacchaeus did, he changes everything. Would you go ahead and just pray for yourself wherever you are at and say, Lord, would you cause me to experience your healing? And so, Lord, today the church is supposed to be a healing place. We are supposed to be a place where people find healing and they are made whole. And today I pray that you will heal many. You will heal your sons and daughters. You will heal them, my father, of emotional issues. You will heal them of physical issues. God, I pray for healing physically because you do that too, not just spiritual. I pray for healing physically. I pray for healing emotionally. I pray for healing mentally. Lord, heal us of the pressure, of the challenges, of the issues that we are facing and heal us even spiritually. May we be transformed by your power. May we be changed by your Holy Spirit. May we be all that you want us to be. Lord, this is my prayer. This is my prayer. And so I pray for you that you may be healed. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, make your prayer right now. May the Lord change and transform you all for his kingdom purposes. And so I say to us today, church, is supposed to be a place of healing. May you receive your healing and may you be a conduit of God's healing wherever you go. 
May you be part of a small group together with other believers. May you be a conduit of healing wherever you go. As you go through life, may God use you to bring healing. May you be like that servant girl out in Aram who said there is a man, a prophet in Samaria. I wish my master would go to him. May we point people to Jesus. May we keep the message simple. May we know everyone can come and may we keep it about God and God alone. God bless you so much. Thank you for being part of our services here at ICC Mombasa today. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.